Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1039. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about investor mindset and why the wealthy are buying stocks because all I'm hearing is so much negativity out there. People are talking about recession. They're talking about a depression. They're talking about all these negative things happening that seem to be very overblown to me, but not because that's my opinion, because it's what the numbers are saying to me. The numbers are not showing a recession, a depression, They're not showing all the terrible news that we're hearing about. And just today, the Fed did a little slight pivot, but I noticed it because it's actually more major than just slight. And here's what they said. It's too soon to pinpoint how high interest rates may need to rise if consumption changes, for example, Fed may not need to go as far. There they are backpedaling already and saying if things aren't as bad as we thought, if inflation is working its way through, which I told you we're seeing little signs of that already, inflation is slowing down, supply chains are starting to work their way through, we are seeing that this is not a huge inflation problem. This is a supply chain problem. And they're saying if consumption changes, for example, The Fed may not need to go as far, meaning they may not need to raise interest rates as much, not 11 times between now and the end of 2023, which is insane to think that interest rates would go up that much in two years. So they're already starting to softly backpedal just a little bit, but that's enough for stocks to take that as a change in tone from the hawkishness that the Fed has been giving as the narrative to a little bit more dovish, to a little bit less strict, less tight, less high interest rate oriented. So we'll be following that and see what happens. The other thing they said was the stock market provides an important price signal. Ding, ding, ding. (laughs) Yes, it does. The stock market is a very important price signal to the nth degree because it tells us six months in advance what the economy is going to do. The stock market is a predictor of the future. It does not look in the rearview mirror. It looks forward and it anticipates things way in advance. So the stock market is the most important indicator that we have, really. So for the Fed to say that they can just ignore the stock market, they don't care if it crashes, baloney. They don't want the stock market to crash because they know that people will come looking for them if that happens because they caused this with all these fast interest rate hikes that caused the bond market to crash, that caused markets to get out of equilibrium and to cause people to get more defensive, to move out of fast growth tech stocks into more conservative value stocks, thereby devastating some of the most popular tech stocks out there that are strong companies that are growing quickly, that have high earnings rates and double digit revenue growth. And now just by tapping the brakes a little bit, And the fact that there's so much darn value out there right now because these technology stocks are actually cheaper than the value stocks. They have higher growth rates and they're selling at lower multiples. That means they're less expensive. Money managers are going to want to invest in technology and get that growth again, especially if interest rates aren't going to rise as fast as we thought. So we've done this full rotation from aggressiveness to fear and slowly tiptoeing back to more aggressive stocks. But what I really wanted to talk to you about today 
is how people with higher net worth treat stocks because perhaps they've gotten their net worth from those stocks. Maybe not, but maybe they did. But they're treating stocks a little bit differently than maybe a newer investor or someone that doesn't have as much invested in the stock market. People that have a large stock portfolio do certain things differently. They buy when stocks are on sale. So when prices decline, they actually come in and buy. They wanna know where the bargains are. They're looking for quality at a discount. And that's when they put their money to work is when they can buy a fast growing company at an inexpensive price. Like I was talking to you about Google the other day and how it's only at 14 times earnings, but yet it has double digit revenue growth, strong cash flow, etc. Rather than looking for getting more safe, they might get more aggressive as the market is lower because stocks have already come down so much that the additional downside is likely limited. So that's when they're likely to get more aggressive is when stocks have already declined. So we're gonna talk about an article that CNBC wrote about affluent investors and We're just going to see if there aren't some different attitudes and some different habits maybe that people with a million dollars or more, what they say and how they handle their investments. So this was written by Robert Frank and the headline says, more wealthy investors would rather hold or add stocks than sell if markets keep sliding, survey says. And the article says, wealthy investors are more likely to add to their stock holdings or shift out of certain sectors rather than sell if stocks continue to decline, according to a new survey. More than one in four or 26% of US millionaire investors surveyed said they would add to their investments if financial markets decline further, according to the UBS Investor Sentiment Survey. Only 19% said they would decrease their investments and 25% said they would make no changes. The survey of 900 investors and 500 business owners with at least a million dollars in investable assets found that 30% of investors said they would shift sectors if markets decline. When asked how likely they would be to invest in certain asset classes, the largest number, 37%, said stocks. They also plan to invest more in commodities, with 32% favoring gold and 31% favoring oil. So I wanna pause there and say, these are accredited investors, investors with a million dollars of investable assets outside of their primary residence. And they're talking about how they would buy more stocks. Also how they would invest maybe in more commodities like silver and gold and oil. Now to me, what they're saying is stocks are on sale. We like buying quality assets on sale. And because of inflation, we may shift some of our assets to more inflation oriented assets, such as commodities. Commodities tend to grow more when inflation is higher, which is why I have some of our portfolio invested in silver and in gold and silver mining stocks. These are the things that increase in value typically as inflation tends to increase. Now, not always, it's not a perfect one-to-one correlation, but in general, when inflation starts to increase, it is something in the investment industry that investors look for more commodity type or real assets, things that you can touch and feel, not just paper assets like stock certificates, but things like oil, gold, silver, copper, maybe even certain foods like coffee or sugar. But the main investor mindset there was not the thought to escape the market, be scared and hide in cash. You didn't hear that, did you? What you heard was we can readjust our portfolio to take advantage of inflation and assets that do well inflation, and we can adjust our portfolio to buy stocks on sale. Those are both great mindsets because the millionaire investor is really thinking about staying invested. They're thinking about having their money work harder for them. And they're thinking about what assets are going to grow and grow their money into more money. And that's the way you have to think to be a successful investor is always how to get your money working harder for you. And what can you put it in that's going to grow and expand? 
The article went on to say a majority of investors cite inflation as a leading investment concern just behind politics and geopolitical risk. A majority, 51%, also said volatility is higher than usual. While the market swings, concerns about rate hikes and inflation are taking center stage. Well, those are the most important points that I wanted to make from that article, and I will put a link to the show notes if you want to read the whole thing. But mainly, the point I'm trying to make is to have the right investor mindset, to not buy into all the negativity that you're hearing. Because remember, The best path is usually the contrarian path, which means that just as everybody seems to get very pessimistic and nobody thinks the market is going to do anything or come back, everyone's convinced it's going lower, well, that's about the time when it surprises us and it does the opposite and it starts to go the other way. And people still don't believe it and still don't believe it. And the market goes up and they're going to say, oh, it's just a bear market bounce. It's just a short term top. You should really use this to be selling and getting out. You're going to hear that and you're going to hear that a lot. But that's not what I'm finding. What I'm finding is we're starting a brand new bull market that's going to take off on a tear for about six months, then take a little bit of a break and continue on for a total of two years. We're going to have massive upside in this bull market. And in order to benefit from that, you're going to have to think like the investors I've talked about today, where you're looking for bargains. You're possibly repositioning some of your portfolio so that you have some assets that benefit from inflation. You're staying in the market. You're not panicking and selling or raising too much cash right now. We are likely close to the bottom. And in my work, I have actually today as my focus day that the market could turn right from here. Why? Well, it just so happens that the options are all expiring today. And that means that People that bought calls thinking the market was going to go up, their options expire. People that bought puts thinking that the market would go down, their options expire. All those contracts are done for the month of May. And they were using those contracts because of the volatility. But as the market starts to turn around again, they're going to want to own the stocks and buy them at these low prices. They're also going to have to cover their short positions. And I've talked a lot over the last several months about how I think the crash is really going to be on the upside, that the shorts are way too short. And this rally is going to catch them off guard. So they're going to have to buy stock and buy stock and buy stock to cover their short positions. This is initially what is going to lead the market higher, but it's going to continue from there. Why? Because things won't come in as bad as the Fed was expecting. We're going to have the supply chains work through. We're going to have inflation even out a little bit. We're going to have growth slow down a little bit. We're having mortgage brokers get laid off again. So once again, we're going to have some layoffs in the banking industry. So the employment numbers aren't going to be quite as strong as they've been. But nonetheless, still strong enough that the economy is going well, the consumer is in good shape, low debt, high savings, high wages, and with the consumer still having confidence and still spending, I see a strong economy ahead. I don't see a recession. All of that is going to catch people off guard and by surprise. And you want to be invested to take advantage of that. Now, regarding the crypto markets, we've seen incredible volatility and that's been very difficult. But we are so early. We don't even have regulations on crypto yet. We have a very strong five years or more ahead of us in crypto, but at least five years. And that's where I'm picking up a major trend that I mentioned in my book. So when the Fed said, perhaps it's better that crypto is imploding now rather than in five years when more people's money would be at risk, I said, so you're telling us you believe crypto will have greater adoption and or be more valuable in five years. And you could see five years as near the peak of a crypto bubble as I do in my book. I don't think it's any coincidence that the Fed mentioned five years and crypto being stronger and higher and more people involved in crypto in five years from now, because they know this is a very strong trend and we're 
just at the very beginning of this. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, has talked about the fact that we're only at roughly $2 trillion in crypto right now. He sees us getting to $20 trillion in crypto very soon. People like macro strategist Rao Paul have talked about $100 trillion coming into crypto. We are just at 2% of that. We don't even have institutions fully into crypto yet. We don't have retail investors into crypto yet from stock brokerages. We are just at the very, very earliest stages of crypto. That's to your benefit because it's so inexpensive that you can buy some of these incredible technologies for a quarter or 50 cents. But understand, one of the most important investor mindsets is time in the market and not timing the market. Sometimes it takes time. As Warren Buffett says, the patient investor is the one who's rewarded and it takes time for these things to play out. So we have to be patient. We have to let the markets do what they're going to do. But I think we have very, very good news ahead for the stock markets. And ultimately, over the next five years, an amazing crypto market as well. These pullbacks and volatility are part of investing. They're part of what we have to deal with to get to high double-digit compounding rates of return. But they're worth it. And it's worth owning quality, making smart investments today at these rock bottom prices so that you're set up really well for the future. And that's really the point I wanted to make today was the moves you're making right now, the moves you make during a bear market, the way that you position yourself, the things that you buy, the things that you invest in, that is what sets you up for wealth in the next cycle. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And don't forget, all of my podcasts are available at my Wealth Mentoring Library at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts, where you'll also find my crypto podcast playlist on the front page of my website and my email list that you can sign up for for regular updates about stocks and crypto. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.